So today we'll discuss libraries. See it. Libraries is one of the content in the Explorer Win. It's one of the parts in the Explorer. What is the use of libraries? So within the libraries only we can store the data within the libraries. In the form of tables, sometimes catalogs, these subfolders. In the subfolders we can store macros, formats, graphs, plots, so on. So we can store the data in the libraries only. See libraries are nothing but folders. In SAS we are calling as a library. Next these are two types mainly. First one is the system defined libraries. Second one is the user defined libraries. System defined libraries means these are defined by SAS system. See after installation of SAS by default we'll get some libraries. Those are called system defined libraries. In different versions of SAS we'll get different libraries. But main libraries are these. Work, SAS help, SAS user. In some versions you may get uh, these also I think. Maps, GIS maps, this. But in advanced versions of SAS, these are inbuilt as in SAS help. So mainly we are getting these three only now in advanced versions. Work, SAS help, SAS use, main libraries. So here, work is the default destination. The default destination means if you are importing the data from outside to SAS by the time you didn't specify any library name but data will be stored in the work library only because work is the default destination okay let me check example I am importing something. Prop import data file. Okay. I want to import the data from this Excel file, class Excel file. Just for example. D drive class dot xls. Out is equals to I am giving the name class. The DBMS Excel. So here, just I have given the data set name. I didn't specify any library name. Just I have given the data set name. In this case, by default, it will store this data in the work library only. This data set. Because work is the default library and default destination. See, select, submit. See where the data set created class, see, in the work library. You can see here on the top, work. One. Okay, one more example. Now I am doing the data entry. Means I am creating my own data set. If you are not special library name here also, then also data will be stored in the work library only. You see here. Data. I am creating one data set. EMP. So I didn't specify any library name. Just I have given the data set name here. Okay, input variable names.
Okay. Oh, this. Okay. Now I'm executing this. Select submit. So where the MP data set created? See by default in the work library only. So here I'm. Because work is the default destination. The default destination. Default library. Okay, good. But it has only temporary storing area. Okay, work is the default library, but it has only temporary storing area. Means here in the work library, you can store the data up to the closing of SAS session only. Once you close SAS session, everything will be deleted from the work library. Okay, now observe. In SAS, we have two data sets. I'm going to close the SAS session. Okay. Now, open your libraries. Open the work library. See, nothing. The data deleted. Means we can store the data in the work library up to the closing of SAS session. Otherwise, you can understand like this also. At the beginning of each SAS session, it is creating a new work library. At the beginning of each SAS session. Like that also you can understand. Say file open program. I have stored on desktop. Like Temporary storing area. Next, uh, this one, SAS help. So this is also a system defined library, SAS help. Okay. This. And it has permanent storing area, permanent storage. But generally, we won't use SAS help library to store our personal data. Because after installation of SAS, so many supporting files were installed here only in the SAS help. Some sample data sets and so many supporting files were installed here. By mistake, if you have deleted some files, your software won't work properly. When you're using the proc import, it may show some error. Import process is not existed, something like that. Means some supporting files were deleted. That's many. So that's the reason my suggestion is don't use the SAS help. If you want, you can use it. It's a system defined library and it has permanent storage. But be careful. Don't delete anything by mistake. Next is SAS user. This is also a system defined library and it has permanent storage in area. So this is the library mainly created for users, okay, for us. So we can store the data here and we can recall the data whenever you want. Okay. We can store the data. But in the real time, while doing the projects, we need to create our own library sometimes. Those are called user defined libraries. Okay, means I'm the user now. I'm working on SAS server. I'm creating my own library. That is called user-defined library. And here these are classified into two types. Okay. One is the dependent, independent. Dependent libraries, independent libraries. Okay, see the concept of these two. Very important. Understand these points. First of all, a dependent libraries. So you can understand meaning here itself by the name. Dependent. So these are dependent on something, means these are dependent on databases, any database, relational, non-relational, 
See what is the main concept of this one and what is the use? By using dependent libraries, we can give a connection between SAS software to database. So this is the main concept. By using dependent libraries, we can give a connection between SAS to database. When it is required, connection between SAS software to database. Suppose I am doing a project. I got a data in an access database. Suppose there are 30 tables. Okay. Access database, suppose here 30 tables. Now I need to import the data from all these 30 tables individually. From all these 30 tables. So how to import the data from an access database to SAS? You can use the import procedure. Already we discussed. You can see it. Like this we can import the data from an access database. But observe here, by using one program, we can import the data from one table only. By using one program, we can import data from one table only. Now here how many tables are there? 30 tables. Now we need to import data from 30 tables. Then how many programs we have to write? 30 programs. See? If you are using import procedure to import the data, then we have to write 30 programs. Okay, we can write but it may take more time. In this case, we can use the dependent libraries. By using dependent libraries, we can give connection between access database to SAS software. So by using dependent libraries, we can give connection between access database to SAS software. Then by using just in a single step, we can import all tables from an access database to data SAS. Okay. So first we will give a connection here between access database to SAS software. Then by single step, we can import all tables. So in this case, we can use the dependent libraries. This is the main concept. We can give a connection between SAS software to database. Okay, next to see the independent libraries concept. Okay, these are independent on databases. And see here, by using independent libraries, we can create an empty libraries only. So here we can create an empty libraries only. Empty folders. Okay, see so when these are required. Suppose, now from an access database, we need to import only two tables. You see, 30 tables are there actually. But out of 30, I need to import the data from only two tables. So if you are using here the dependent libraries concept, by default it will import all 30 tables. But not required, I need only two tables. Then by using independent libraries, we can create an empty library first of all. Then by writing some programs, we can import the data from those two selected tables and we can store this, those data sets in an empty library. Okay, this one. So this is the concept of independent libraries to create an empty library mainly. Dependent, independent. And here we have these types. Temporary. Permanent. Temporary. Permanent. See here, temporary means those libraries will be exist up to the closing of SAS session only. Once you close the SAS session, those libraries will get deleted. Permanent means those are permanent. Until and unless you delete, those are permanent here. Okay. So some theory part about these three libraries.
said work library the work library is a temporary library that is automatically defined by sas at the beginning of each sas session the work library stores temporary sas files that you create as well as files created internally by sas next sas help library see each sas site receives the sas help library which contains a group of catalogs and other files containing information that is used to control various aspects of your sas session so the defaults stored in this library are for everyone using sas at your installation default files okay sas user is mainly designed for learners we can store our data and we can recall basic data next to see a temporary library so these libraries we like this up to the closing of the sas session form this once you close sas session these libraries will get deleted next to permanent library these libraries are permanent yes. temporary libraries permanent libraries next see on no point to create the libraries we have two methods first one is the gui method graphical user interface method another name is the wizard method means here you won't write any programs drag and drop method in this method we can create dependent libraries independent libraries and here we can create temporary permanent if you are using the cui method character user interface method another name is the syntax method so here we need to write a program in this method we can create dependent libraries independent libraries both but only temporary here we cannot create any permanent library remember this by using cui method we cannot create a permanent library we can create only temporary libraries that's why many will prefer gui it's very easy no need to write any code and we can create temporary permanent both next rules to give the library name so to give the library name also we should follow some rules see the library name should starts with either character or underscore only don't start with the numbers next the library name must be less than or equal to 8 characters we can use minimum 1 maximum 8 next the library name accepts only underscore as a special character you can use the library name like this or like this but if you are using any other character slash space anything to show an error so we have to follow these rules while giving the library name so these are the common rules like um, password while giving the password also you are following same rules like next step. okay i'll show you the examples now 
first of all GUI method here first I need to create dependent permanent library from Oracle database dependent permanent library from Oracle database means I need to give a connection between SAS to Oracle database the latest one is So now here I need to give a connection between SAS to Oracle database. <coughs> Skill please. Okay, this is the information provided by client. So we need to connect to Oracle database. Use a password. So if it is having the host, they will provide the host also. Then we can give that one. As for the specification. Okay. See in my local system, I have this. One or I can SQL plus. I will connect to this. See, first of all, select this one. See, new library from the menu bar. It is asking the name. Okay, I am giving the name dependent permanent on seven. Okay, just for identification. Means a dependent permanent library. So here select engine as Oracle. Oracle. Oracle and see here very important point if you want to make your library as permanent then you have to check this box if you didn't check it will make it as a temporary one but here as for the requirement I need to create this one as a permanent library so let's check this box so whatever the information you got you can give here. Just take it. I mean it's case is to us. Sometimes they may provide the path. If they have given the path, just copy and paste, nothing else. No option. Okay, see it here library creation with the name dependent permanent 7 because we have given that name ok open this see here it is showing three data sets see class 1 EMP EMP1 means in that Oracle database three tables so I have imported all those tables at a time if there are 100 tables we can import all 100 tables okay. There are three. So we have imported all three at it. Okay, remember one point now. Now there is a connection between our SAS software to that database. So here if you have deleted any file, it will reflect there also. If you observe here. Username is SAS August 30. Yes, yes. So see how many tables are there. Select star from. So now here are three tables. Class one, EMP, EMP one. That's it. See here it's right. Now there is a connection. If you have deleted any files here, it will reflect here also. Suppose observe here. I'm deleting EMP one. So I have deleted in SAS. Okay, let me check here. Select star from tab. So now there is an EMP1 table that we are deleting. It is showing only two tables now. Class 1 EMP. Because there is a connection between your SAS software to the database now. So whatever the changes you are going to make here, it will reflect there. Even if you are creating any new data set here, that will reflect here. So generally what we can do after importing, suppose I have given a connection and I have imported some tables. Do one thing, just copy these tables from here within the SAS in any other library you can paste 
and here you can make any changes then it won't reflect in the database because I have copied from here and I'm using here okay no problem like this you can do. So see these are the steps we did it's very easy select a new library from the menu bar first of all then you can give the name you can select the engine means to which database you need to give a connection next to enable the box means to make it as a permanent then you can give the information whatever the information you got from your client just copy paste nothing else okay next step to create a dependent temporary library from access database now we need to create dependent temporary library okay this is the information we need to give a connection between sas to access access database name lab in the d drive Okay. Now we need to import all tables from this access database. Okay, same. Select new library. You can give the name here. Dependent temporary on seventh. Okay, I have some give some name as for the rules. Now which engine access? And don't check this box because I want to make it as a temporary one means I want to use this library up to the closing of SAS session only after that it's not required for me so don't check it browse the path or you can write also so by default it is showing SAS files right so select all files to it so actually that access database doesn't have any user ID or password if any ID passwords are there, they will provide, but it doesn't have. See now, dependent temporary library created. See the name, dependent temporary seven. Open this. There's so many data sets. Because there are so many tables. So I have imported all tables at a time. So I can move these tables from here to here suppose if I want and I can make any changes here suppose I don't need this I can remove and I can use this like that okay. you see what are the steps we did So this select new library from the menu bar library name engine disable the box okay. path okay. the next uh, to create an independent permanent library to create an independent permanent library if you want to create an independent library first of all we need to create an empty folder in the external data source anywhere on desktop or c drive d drive anywhere we need to create an empty folder okay here i will create an empty folder here with the name my data so just it is an empty folder nothing here just an empty nothing. okay observe here same select new library okay you can give the name now independent permanent insert so here we need to keep it in here as default only because it's an independent one and I want to make it as a permanent so check the box browse the path 
do you drive my data okay okay so your library creates independent permanent seven open this so nothing here just an empty library i have created an empty folder that's all nothing here. and observe here only these libraries are having the symbol see observe this is the blue color globe symbol actually if any library is having this symbol means that is an in, that is a dependent library if any library is not having that symbol means that is an independent library you can understand okay and one more thing why we are taking the path from that folder here suppose in this library independent permanent seven i'm going to store 100 gb data very very big tables i'm going to store okay here means physically where it will take the memory from the hard disk from the d drive now because i have created an empty folder here in the d drive and from here i have taken the path because to allocate the memory space now it is take it will take the memory space from the d drive from the hard disk so in which row you have more empty space there you can create an empty folder and you can do that path you can see here what are the steps we did same select new library from the menu bar so this is the name i have given engine is always depart for independent library so enable the box and you can browse an empty folder path next to create an independent temporary library same first create an empty folder in the external data source new folder temp data see just an empty one nothing here same select new library from the menu bar okay i am giving the name independent temporary select default don't check this box browse path So these are the steps we did here. Same, select new library from the menu bar. You can name, default, disable the box. Okay. Now here we have two permanent libraries, two temporary libraries. You can see the difference between these. Permanent and temporary. Okay, now I'm going to close the SAS session. Okay, see the libraries it's here independent permanent library is there independent permanent is there but temporary libraries are not here those were deleted that's the difference between permanent and temporary permanent means these are permanent until at least you delete like this these are permanent temporary means those libraries will exist up to the closing of SAS session only GUI method. Next turn here C U I method. So by using C U I method we can create only temporary libraries. Only temporary. See here syntax. Here we'll start with lib name. This is the statement, libly. If it's a global statement, libly library name. And here we can specify the path, libly library name path. Okay, now 
I want to create a dependent temporary library from Access Database. Then see it. Just follow the syntax. Keyword is lib name. Library name. You can use anything. Suppose my project. You can give the path where it is in D drive. Lab dot md. Select submit. Send my project. Dependent temporary library created. Same, I have given it a connection between SAS to access. So I have imported all tables. Okay. But in this method, we can create only temporary libraries. Next. Uh, independent temporary library. Okay, same. A lib name, a library name. Okay, PRG data, project data, something. Okay. D drive. I have an empty folder there. Name, temp data. Okay. Just select submit. See. Empty library create independent. Like this, by using CUI method, we can create dependent temporary, independent temporary libraries. Only temporary libraries. Here we are using the lib name statement to create temporary libraries in the CUI method. Next to an important point. How to save the data in the user specified libraries? So at the beginning I told you one point. In SAS, work is the default library. So everything is going to store in work by default. Now the point is how to store the data in the user specified libraries. Now we have to store everything in this library, independent permanent seven. Because this is the user defined library and it has permanent storing area. So I want to store the data here. Permanently I want to store the data here. Okay, see the programs now. Actually, this is the first method. Two methods are there. Simple. Program is same. Here, before the data set name, first of all, we should write the library name. Dot data set name. See? First of all, we should write the library name, dot dataset name. Now observe here, select submit. So where the dataset created now? In this library only. See on the top, independent permanent set. Now see the work, see, not here. So where the dataset stored here, independent permanent set. Even here also same, first of all, Write the library name dot dataset name. So now select submit. Okay. Select submit. See? This. So this is one method. Every time we should write first library name dot dataset name. And one more method is there. Okay, see here. We can make user defined library as a default library. See, in SAS, work is the default library, right? But you can make your library also as a default library for the particular session, for the current session. By using options statement, we can change the global options. Means we can change the system options. Say as for the global options, work is the default library. But now I want to make my library as default library. So you can write like this. Options user is equals to independent 
permanent and seven. So you can make this library as default library for this session. Select, select. Now see these programs. <coughs> no need to add the library name here. Okay, I'm executing this. Select, submit. So we the data set created independent permanent 7. I didn't specify any library name, but here only is 2. So this one. Because I made my library as default library for this session. So whatever the data set you are going to create while importing or creating anything, everything will be stored here only. See, this is the easy, right? At the beginning of the SAS session, only one time you have to execute this statement. Then everything will be stored in this library only. In this method, what is the difficult? Every time you should write like this. Uh, library name dot data set name. Library name dot data set. This is actually. So like this, we can store the data in the user defined libraries. So this is the concept of library storage. Simple libraries for what? To store the data. Two types. System defined, user defined. These are the main system defined libraries. Work, SAS help, SAS user. Okay, in real time while doing the projects, we will create our own libraries. Those are user defined. And dependent, independent. And here temporary permit. So I have given the definitions. Next, while creating the libraries, we can use two methods and differences. And what are the rules we need to follow while giving the library name? Then in the GI method, how to create dependent permanent, dependent temporary, independent permanent, independent temporary library. Next to CUA method. How to create dependent temporary, independent temporary libraries. Next to how to save the data in the user specified libraries. This is about the libraries. Next to file shortcuts. See by using file shortcuts, we can create shortcuts for the external files. Okay, when it is required. Suppose I am doing the project and I need to follow this document. Based on this one I can generate the reports. But this document is outside of SAS somewhere. So I want to create a shortcut for this document within the SAS. Okay. See so it's simple. Open file shortcuts. Right click. New file shortcut. Okay, you can give some name. Make it permanent. Browse that. D drive. Magnet project. You see, by default, it is showing SAS files only. Select all files. So, see. Yes. Now I have created a shortcut within the SAS. I can open here directly. For any file we can create a shortcut, even for a SAS programming file, anything. Next to favorite folders. Here we can create a shortcut for the folder. That is only the difference. Here for individual files, here for the folder. Okay. Now for this entire folder I want to create a shortcut. Scanner project. Okay, so many files. For all those files I want to create. So entire for the entire folder I want to create a shortcut. Then open the favorite folders. Select new favorite folder. We can give the name. New favorite folder. Project data. Browse the path. 
my computer do you try See it? Shortcut created for the folder. Open this. See? For all files. Created. So for the entire folder you can create a shortcut. This. And computer we know. Just we can see the drives. We can see what are the drives. We can see the data. So these are the four contents from the explorer window.